It's over. Don Caligieri is gone. We're going to flash through a few things here. Um, the aftermath of the battle. Uh, King's men and the skeletons, they put out the flames. They save the people who were there. McLean, you find the body of Atlas later. Lying a couple of streets away on a rooftop. Dead. Very clearly dead. Effie. You can have whatever moments with Peter or anyone else that you want later. Cal, you return to the city. You reclaim your human form again uh, after ve after vehemently claiming the city of Mildred for Mars. Uh, <laughs> you once again, you time passes. Uh, you meet Meg out of the hospital. Um, She's so happy to see you, and so happy and so proud that you have finally rid this city uh, of its greatest threat. Uh, and so I have to ask. I'm going to go with each of you, and I'm going to ask what you do, starting with McLean. In the aftermath of Don Caligieri, what does McLean do? with his life, his afterlife. I um, warn you that my image is frozen again, so I apologize. Oh, it has completely frozen, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, McLean is going to take up that offer from Alex to become, like, supernatural PD. Um, but he also you know, is going to go and talk to Astrid, who he is now, you know, unwittingly becoming best pals with um, about possible ways in which he might be able to look a little less dead and maybe see his family again. You become, you know, a revenant in the service of the police, in the service of the law. You are, you have, with your vengeance gone, you now have a purpose again. You work with Astrid um, to try and find some way to keep you alive. Um, she keeps an eye on your family uh, for you, making sure that they're okay um, when you can't see them. And who knows? Maybe someday Angus McLean will see his family again. Cal, what yes. do you do? Uh, the first thing Cal does, after all the dust is cleared, we've settled everything. Um, he's reunited with Meg. He's had, you know, their moment. Uh, he walks into the offices of Fester, Nestor, and McClucky. He walks to his desk, and I imagine people are like, where the fuck have you been? Yeah, one of the guys was like, Cal, where the hell have you been? You've been off for like Fuck you, Greg! And he flips his desk. Yes! I quit! Yes! He flips everyone That is off. the best way to come and back from sick leave. And he walks out. You hear as someone walks out, someone just goes, goes, reckon he won the lottery? Um, Cal gets, he sells his apartment, he buys a nice little place in the, in Uptown, uh, and he starts setting up charities and, uh, sort of, you know, social clubs activities around the city, like all around the city, not just Uptown. Basically, he wants everyone to have fun hell yeah he, he he sets up uh like charities to help like uh, out of like you know home people uh 
and he he sets up just fun activities for children adults like all sort of things skills classes he he doesn't want people to be trapped in the same boring loop he was his entire life hell yes fuck yeah i thought so and you know he does some crime fighting and the background when meg fighting, you know when meg needs him he's <laughs> at beck and call because he is kind of really powerful <laughs> yes effie what do you do in the aftermath effie has the answers that she sought after for so long and now he's kind of lost her her running motive. She no longer has her reputation to fall back on, but she has a legend that will always remember her. And she has that story that will keep going on forever and ever. She looks at what is her life and considers how things stand. The Hearthstone, her work, her relationship with Ethel. She manages to amicably break up with Buck. They had a good thing, but they both knew what it was. And she just, she takes a step back and looks at everything that she's done. Because she knows a guy. She knows a story, but stories have ends, and she just wants to sit back and watch with her husband at her side. I want to roleplay a little scene with you. Okay. On the roof of the Hall of Records, as the sun sets, there are a couple of deck chairs set up. And sat in them are you and Ethel. And as the two of you watch the sunset, she passes you the bottle. That it then? It's all over? Hopefully. I'm not sure I've got any more in me to finish it. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I'm sure you got something more on to give. Besides, it's always another story. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I th I think I I want to put the books down and just live my life for a bit. I mean, hey, fair enough. I've seen that young man you've managed to tangle. Because, frankly, if you don't, yep. I will. Ha! Oh, that's only because you're your work. <laughs> He's looking at you, kid. Shanks the bottle with you as the sun goes down. And finally, we arrive at Mal. Now, I'm very sorry, but I don't get to ask you what you do. Because we're going to fucking play what happens to you. After the dust clears and things settle down, you are invited back once again to the Cult of Cards headquarters. You are ushered in by number one. And finally, all 22 of you are sat round this table. Each of you has your card on the table. And finally, 21 stands up and with him you feel the city move. Friends, comrades, Long have we worked for so many goals. Brought together by our places in the mist. 
we are finally all here. Assembled. As, we, as our final piece takes her place. Number 13. And so... We must complete our final goal. And I am sorry. 21 reaches out a hand and the cards in, fl in front of all of you begin to glow. A bolt of lightning lances out of the card and strikes each member in the chest. Cries go up around the table and Mal, you feel pain striking through you. But as you watch this, you see even the card in front of 21 has struck him. And for the first time you could possibly believe, you see pain in his eyes, but also acceptance. And you die one last time. When you awaken, the rest of the Cult of Cards are gone. Nothing but ashes remains. You fall out of your chair and you find something under it. There is a letter under your chair. And as you open it and read the precise and clear handwriting, it says, Dear Mal, I am truly sorry to have deceived you for so long. I, number 21, the world, was the one who hired Peter Finch to kill you. I, you, I drew upon the mist to grant you the power of the Death Tarot because I needed someone who could survive our final goal. I told you once that we were here to save the world. Unfortunately, that duty does not lie on our shoulders. I needed you to survive so that you could look after him. He is your responsibility now. I am so sorry. 21. And as you stagger to your feet reading this letter, you look into the center of the table, and there is a bundle wrapped in blankets. And as you lift the child to you, you feel the power through them. All of time, all of space, all the world in the power of this child. Years later, child well raised by Mal she's not the perfect parent but she looks after him and she tells him stories 
stories of what she went through and what happened. And Mal, you are immortal. You never die. At least not for long. But this child shows power. And eventually he learns how to step back through the years. And as he does, he looks for the one thing that you would have needed to bring all of this about, to make this work. He finds Clark Smith, and he employs the ghost in the machine to help frame Clark for the murder of John Henderson, alongside Mal Ashford, the yet-to-be-unknown Eleanor Finch, and Cal Hardaway. He meets Cal- he meets Clark later. They argue, and Clark obviously shows him no respect. But the Traveler just smiles, knowing that his duty was done. And he steps back through the years towards destiny. And that is where we will end our session and our campaign. Thank you all so much for joining us, and thank you very much, guys, for playing. Thank Hot you for running, G. That was awesome. Thank Woo! you. Oh, it's so cool. Absolutely, thank oh you. Oh my so god. Cool. One final time, we are going to move over to Patreon to geek out over the credits and talk about this. We will be back next week to do a little campaign retrospective and just go through everything that has happened. Uh, yeah, we're, gonna go, we're gonna go over to Patreon and... Um, uh talk about this last final session because i don't know about you guys but i had a fucking blast doing that yeah it was pretty great I was so i was grinning the whole way through oh, oh emotions emotions um thank you very much all of you for watching uh if, especially if you have been here from the beginning uh if this is the first one of the streams you're watching sorry we just spoiled the entire story for you go back on youtube and watch all of it you know yeah, how it ends now. Should, so. You know how it ends now. There's about 60 hours of content back there. Go have fun. It'll, it'll be less tense for you than it was for us. <laughs> God, we've done 60 hours? Three hour episode. streams, and this is episode 23. So guess what? We've done 69 hours. Yes! Nice! <laughs> nice! Nice! nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining us. Good night and goodbye! Bye. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye. 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 Woo.